analysis by Scripps Research finds that at least one in three people infected with COVID-19 never develop symptoms. I'm joined now by one of the authors of this new report, Daniel Oran, who is a member specifically of the Digital Medicine Group at Scripps Research Translational Institute. Daniel, welcome. Hey, great to be with you, Jim. So this is a startling number. I mean, we suspected this, but now it's confirmed. We've got millions of folks out there that are likely spreading this virus and have no idea that they're infected. Exactly. Um, you know, we, we began looking at this last April and published a paper back in June. And a lot of the scientific community was skeptical. The folks, in fact, wrote to the editor and asked the paper be retracted. There was such pushback about it. But we stuck with the data and we've been looking for about six or eight months now. We eventually collected about 60 studies looking at about 1.8 million people worldwide. The conclusion is about one third of folks who get the coronavirus never will know. They'll have no symptoms, but they can pass on the virus to others. In fact, we know about half of all the new cases are caused by folks who, when they pass on the virus, actually have no symptoms. So this is a concern. It makes it really hard to uh, control the spread of the virus. So aside from the startling numbers, it brings up a lot of other questions in terms of how we deal with the virus. Let's start with vaccines. Somebody that doesn't know they're infected that gets a vaccine, what happens there? Are we looking into that? Yeah, sure. It's okay to, uh, you know, have, if you've had COVID-19 to get the vaccine. Um, the challenge is we're kind of running ahead of a virus that's very quickly replicating and changing. So we know now, for example, in the UK, there are new strains that spread 50 to 70% more quickly. Um, so the great challenge is we have to kind of run ahead of a virus that, that's mutating, that's changing, and very quickly uh, catching up and spreading. So uh, getting that vaccine out into folks' arms is the great challenge right now, doing it as quickly as possible. We have talked about the importance of testing all along. This would seem to ramp that up even more. Yeah, you know, the testing has been a, a great challenge for us. And I think the, the lesson we've learned from looking at asymptomatic spread is that we're doing it the wrong way. We need to focus instead of this kind of big centralized, very slow testing, this PCR based testing, we need to move to home based rapid testing. So folks can have sort of like a home pregnancy test they can do by themselves in the bathroom in the morning and know whether they're infectious or not. Today, the testing is more about bookkeeping. It's about knowing we have X number of people who might be infected. That doesn't actually stop the spread of the virus. So we need to move to rapid home tests to allow people to take charge and isolate themselves if they actually turn out to be infected. Today, you get a test, the answer comes back a couple of days later. You might have already spread the virus to dozens of people by then. So shifting to that rapid home testing could make a real difference in the pandemic. Daniel, what happens with your report now? Because it does, it feels kind of like a bombshell, even though we suspected these numbers were potentially this large to have the confirmation. Where does this go from here and what may it prompt? Yeah, we hope it's going to encourage the incoming team in Washington to look again at the testing strategy in particular and really begin to change that focus from the big centralized, very expensive PCR based tests they're being done now and move to these rapid antigen tests. This can make a big difference. All right, Daniel Oran of the Digital Medicine Group at Scripps Research Translational Institute. Thank you so much for your time. Great to be with you.